One of my favorite co quotes is, if you, can, if you can't fly, then run. If you can't run, then walk. If you can't walk, then crawl. But whatever you do, you have to keep moving forward. I'd like to welcome Jody Stetsman to please come up and give the invocation, please. Um, over the past several months, it has been so easy to become hopeless by what is going on in the world. From Ferguson to New York, from Paris to Pakistan, to every place in between that is in conflict, it can at times seem like a daunting task to fight for equality for all. Martin Luther King Jr. Day reminds us that we must continue in his footsteps because he never gave up when I am sure there were times when he felt hopeless and tired. So I am reminded of this uh, Philippians verse. Rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again, rejoice. Let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. And in the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. Whatever you have learned or received or heard or seen in me, put it into practice, and the God of peace will be with you. Just to remind you all that we have chicken, black-eyed peas, cornbread, peach cobbler, um, this table here will go next, and then we'll just go left to right. by Trisha Moonbeam, and it is called In Honor of Martin Luther King. Some kings rule their kingdoms setting down, surrounded by luxury, soft cushions and fans, but this king stood strong, stood proud, stood tall. When the driver told Rosa, move to the back of the bus. When the waiter told students, we don't serve your kind. When the mayor told voters, your vote doesn't count. And when the sheriff told marchers, get off our streets, using fire hoses, police dogs, and cattle prods to move them along. This king stood strong, stood proud, stood tall, speaking of peace, of love, of children, hand in hand, free at last, free at last. When some yelled for violence, 
for angry revenge. An eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. He stood his ground preaching peace. And when some spit out hatred, he stood there smiling, spreading love, until it rolled like the sea across the land, sweeping away Jim Crow, breaking down the walls, ringing the bells joyfully for freedom, until standing on the mountaintop, they shot him, coldly, hoping to see him fall, hoping to put him away, to bring him low. But this king, even in death, even today, stands strong, stands proud, stands tall, and we remember. That is a poem by Jamie McKenzie. is Renee Hunt. And Renee is, oh, there's Renee right there. And she will be speaking. Okay. Let America be America again. Let America be America again. Let it be the dream it used to be. Let it be the pioneer on the plain, seeking a home where he himself is free. America never was America to me. Let America be the dream the dreamers dreamed. Let it be that great, strong land of love, where never kings conceive nor tyrants scheme that any man be crushed by one above. It never was America to me. Oh, let my land be a land where liberty is crowned with no false patriotic wreath, but opportunity is real and a life is free. Equality is in the air we breathe. There's never been equality for me, nor freedom in this homeland of the free. Say, who are you? That, mum that mumbles in the darkness? And who are you that draws the evil veil across the stars? I am the poor, white, fooled and pushed apart. I am the Negro bearing slavery scars. I am the red man driven from the land. I am the immigrant clutching the hopes I seek and finding only the same old stupid plan of dog eat dog, of mighty crush the weak. I am the young man full of strength and hope, dangled in that ancient endless chain of profit, power, gain, of grab the land, of grab the gold, of grab the ways of satisfying need, of work the man, of take the pay of owning everything for one's own gain. I am the farmer, bondsman to the soil. I am the worker sold to the machine. I am the Negro, servant to you all. I am the people, humble, hungry, mean. Hungry yet today, despite the dream. Beaten yet today, oh pioneers. I am the man who never got ahead, the poorest worker bartering through the years. Yet, I am the one who dreamt our basic dream in the old world while still a serf of kings, who dreamt a dream so strong, so brave, so true, that even yet it might Daring sings in every brick and stone, in every furrow turned. That's made America the land it has become. Oh, I'm the man who sailed those early seas in search of what I meant to be my home.
for I am the one who left the dark Ireland shore and Poland's plain and Ireland's grassy lea and from and torn from black Africa's strand I came to build a homeland of the free the free who said the free not me surely not me the millions on relief still today. The millions shot down where we strike. The millions who have nothing for our pay. For all the dreams we've dreamed, and all the songs we've sung, and all the hopes we've held, and all the flags we've hung. The millions who have nothing for our pay, except the dream that almost died today. Oh, let America be America again, the land that never has been yet, and yet must be, the land where every man is free, the land that's mine, the poor man's, Indians, Negroes, me. Who made America? Whose sweat and blood, whose faith and pain, whose hand at the foundry, whose plow in the rain, must bring back our mighty dream again. Sure, call me any ugly name you want. The steel of freedom does not stain. From those who live like leeches on the people's lives, we must take our land back again. America, oh yes. I say it plain. America never was America to me, and yet I swear this oath, America will be. Out of the rank and ruin of our gangster death, the rape and rot of graft and stealth and lies, we, the people, must redeem the land, the mines, the plants, the rivers, the mountains and the endless plains, all, all the stretch of these great green states, and make America. James Mercer Langston again. Hughes was born February 1st, 1902, over 100 years ago, in Joplin, Missouri. His parents divorced when he was a young child, and his father moved to Mexico. He was raised by his grandmother until he was 13 when he moved to Lincoln, that's in Illinois, to live with his mother and her, <clears throat> excuse me, when he moved to Lincoln, Illinois to live with his mother and her husband before the family eventually settled in Cleveland, Ohio. It was in Lincoln that Hughes began writing poetry. After graduating from high school, he spent a year in Mexico, followed by a year at Columbia University in New York City. This is 100 years ago. That's interesting to think, I think. During this time, he held odd jobs, such as assistant cook, launderer, and busboy. He also traveled to Africa and Europe, working as a seaman. In November 1924, so he would have been 22 years old, he moved to Washington, D.C. Hugh's first book of poetry, The Weary Blues, written at age 24, was published by Alfred A. Knopf in 1926. He finished his college education at Lincoln University in Pennsylvania three years later. Hughes, who claimed Paul Lawrence Dunbar, Carl Sandburg, and Walt Whitman as his primary influences, is particularly known for his insightful, colorful portrayals of black life in America from the 20s through the 60s. Hughes refused to differentiate between his personal experience and the common experience of black America. He wanted to tell the stories of his people in ways that reflected their actual culture, including both their suffering and their love of music, laughter, and language itself. Langston Hughes passed away on May 22, 1967 at the age of 65 with complications from abdominal surgery for cancer. We lost him all too soon. It'd be nice to know what he'd have to say today.
I too sing America by Langston Hughes. I too sing America. I am the darker brother. They send me to eat in the kitchen when company comes. But I laugh and eat well and grow strong. Tomorrow, I'll be at the table when company comes. Nobody will dare say to me, eat in the kitchen then. Besides, they'll see how beautiful I am and be ashamed. I too am America. You know, we've done this um, lunch in a couple other years, and we decided that there are so many people in our community who are doing good things and advancing the cause and the beliefs of Dr. King that it was time to not just look at Martin Luther King Day as another day off or the day you don't get mail and you can't go to the bank. Uh, we need to realize that uh, there's a reason for today and to celebrate and honor the man, but not, not just the man, but actually his mission and his beliefs. Um, Yolanda Nuncio Chavez is the inaugural recipient of the Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Living the Legacy Award. And this is given to a person who has made significant and tangible contributions in the areas of race relations, justice, and human rights. So let me tell you, Yolanda Nuncio. <laughs> and Yolanda and I go way back. So. <laughs> I will tell you, I've known her since I was in junior high school. Um, I was in her brother's class. So I knew of her because everybody knew Yolanda because even then she was making noise for justice and equality, okay, even in junior high school. Um, Yolanda continued throughout her professional career. She has encouraged and supported women's racial and civil rights. Here are just a few of the things, and in no means is this an inclusive list, but just some of the things. She teaches citizenship classes and has done this for years. She has interpreted for the Grand Island Police Department when bilingual speakers were needed to interpret for women who are victims of violence and were non-English speaking. She served on working boards, not just one of those you put your name on, but you actually work, um, on boards that focus on cultural understanding, such as the YWCA and the Multicultural Coalition. She's participated on the Hall County Human Relations Committee to develop signage at the Hall County offices to promote non-discriminatory practices in county offices. She was certified as a REACH facilitator when she taught at GI Public Schools. The program provided training on cultural competency to students in our school system. She served on the Hispanic Advisory Committee at both Central Community College and University of Nebraska at Kearney. She voiced concerns after the Youth Leadership Tomorrow program was developed because youth of color were not adequately represented in the group's composition. After she spoke up, changes were implemented to make sure that it was composed and looked like our community more. She's testified before the state legislature on bills affecting people of color. Four different governors, Republicans and Democrats, have appointed her to the Nebraska Latino Commission, and she was elected to serve as chair on more than one occasion. She has served on the Latino Educational Summit, Summit sponsored by the Department of Education and the Latino Educational Summit since its inception 10 years ago. More than 600 students of color across the state attend the summit every single year. She's a voter registrar. She gives classes on how to be that. She coordinates voter registration, and she has done that for many, many years. And these are just a few of the things that Yolanda has done in her lifetime to make a difference and to li um, live Dr. King's mission of equality for all. Yolanda was born and raised in Grand Island, is married to Saul, he's homesick. Uh, they have three adult children and several grandchildren. She graduated from Grand Island Senior High, and I love this about Yolanda, she's a hometown girl. And you know what, she came from humble beginnings, and she's making a difference. She began a career as a cosmetologist, I did not know that. She found it wasn't for her, so she became a VISTA volunteer. She was the director for La Raza Cultural Center and has worked for others through positions at Head Start and was an administrator at an elementary school. Yolanda's main personal philosophy and what she's taught her students and the people she's in contact is, don't forget where you came from, don't forget your first language. As you make it and succeed, bring someone up with you. She demonstrates these values by example. I love Dr. King's quotes. I hope you had a chance to look at the tables and some of the quotes that were written underneath your, your tablecloth there. 
This is one of my favorites, and Dr. King said, life's most persistent and urgent question is, what are you doing for others? Many people come to mind, but Yolanda, you are so, so deserving of this. You are changing the world, one person at a time, through your words, through your actions, and through what you demonstrate to others, and you're leaving a legacy of serving and mentoring others. Please help me welcome Yolanda Chavez. First of all, I would like to thank Anita and the YWCA for selecting me for this honor. I believe there are many other individuals who are more worthy of receiving this, so thank you very much. Um, I would also like to thank Ann U. Butner, Dory Bush, and Ann Marsh, Marsh for, I've known them for many, many years, and they have been friends and they have been supportive, and in times when other people had lots of things to say, they were always there to support me, and for that I thank you. It's kind of funny that I was notified of this recognition last week because, in with, because within the last few days, I was told that people's perception of me was that I only defended the Latino community, and then I received notice of this award. It's kind of like here and here, you know, it was pretty, Pretty, pretty impressive. Um, so, since I was contacted by Anita, I have been thinking about the things that I have been involved in for the last few years, and the specific situations that highlighted my thoughts are the following. First of all, this article comes from 1975. That's 40 years ago. That's a long time. I look very young and very thin, so <laughs> anyway. Um, <clears throat> there, are, the first, there are signs that are still posted in Hall County Courthouse. Anita mentioned this in her introduction. We worked with the Hall County Board in the 90s to develop a policy for the county. These signs were posted in three different languages to get this message across to the community, English, Spanish, and Vietnamese. At that time, these were the most common languages in Hall County. Perhaps it is time to get the signs posted in other languages, since our community has become even more diverse. But when you go to the county courthouse, when you go to pay your license or pay for your taxes and buy your plates, in the display there, next to the, the front there, there are these three signs. There's one in English, there's one in Spanish, and there's one in Vietnamese. And these signs were part of a committee that was put together by the county board when there were certain issues within county government and hiring practices. Were there some concerns? I'm not saying there were issues, but there were concerns. And so this committee developed this signage to put in at the building, and it is still there. I have this card from one of my former students, which I will read to you. This card was so important to me because it showed that she felt that I cared for her and felt she was important. She was, a, she was one of a small number of Anglo children in the school where I was. And it says, Dear Mrs. Nuncio, I know I was not here for all the time you were here, but this short time was the best time in school I ever had. I usually don't like school, but you're the first principal that knows my name. Thanks. And that's nice to me, not like other principals. Thank you very much. I wish you good luck. Sincerely, Nicole, and she says, P.S., I'll miss you, even though I, I was not here for a long time. So that, that to me was a very, very important message. I also remembered when I was still teaching at Walnut, and we had our parent-teacher conferences, and after a conference with a Vietnamese father, he thanked me with these words. Thank you for teaching my children English. But more importantly, thank you for, them, for teaching them to be proud of their Vietnamese heritage and their language. He had been concerned that they would lose both all of the GI. 
I just spent a week at the Texas, Mexico, and New Mexico, Mexico border. It was an experience that I will remember for a long time as I saw the conditions in which people lived and visited with people who have come to our country to live and their experiences in getting here. We are so lucky to live here and only by the grace of God and a moment in time are we lucky enough to live in the United States. When my children were young, it was common for us to get phone calls from people who felt I was in the wrong for standing up for some things that were going on in GI. I can remember one time when my young son answered the phone saying, Nuncio res residents, and the caller angrily said, you blank people should all go back to Mexico. My son calmly looked at me, handed me the phone, and said, Mom, it's for you. <laughs> These types of call were the norm in our home. I need to thank my husband who, as Nita said, is homesick, but my son is here, my youngest son, and several members of my family. But I need to thank them all for putting up with me and for the things that have all happened over the years. Today we see instances taking place in our country that show we are still a long way from ensuring that all people, regardless of the color of their skin, their religious belief, their language, their national origin, their income level, their sexual orientation, their gender, and their sexual preference are treated with dignity and respect. We each have the responsibility of taking care of each other. In El Paso, when speaking with the students that traveled with us, I was a part of a group that was sponsored by the College of St. Mary's. Um, at the end of each day in our debriefings, we spoke about our responsibilities in taking care of each other and speaking up when we saw injustices take place. We may not be able to change the world as individuals, but as individuals, we can make a change with the people that we come in contact with. This is one of my most favorite quotes, quotes of Dr. King. There comes a time when one, one must take a position that is neither safe nor politic nor popular, but he must take it because his conscience tells him it is right. Once again, thank you very much, and thank you for this award, and thank you for your attention. some Martin Luther King quotes, and I stirred that when I put it around there, because I thought of Yolanda, the, the quote that she shared. You have to take it because your conscience says it's right. That very same quote. Very, very cool. We're going to watch, watch a very short uh, the I Have a Dream speech. It's about four minutes long, and then we'll end with some just a few thank yous and have you out of here by 1 o'clock. So, Nikki, are we ready? Let's go ahead. yesterday afternoon and we were, we were um, setting things up and Nikki brought a friend and he said he'd never seen this before and he he um, just thought it was a day off work and I thought how very sad so I'm so glad you chose to spend an hour with us today um, some thank yous first of all big thank you to Sue Perny where'd Sue go Sue Perny and Nikki who toiled in the kitchen and I hope you liked the meal it was really good thank you thank you um, somebody said, who sponsored lunch? And it, um, it was, yeah, I know. And it was like, well, we just did it. Because you know what? Sometimes you just suck it up because you need to do it. So <laughs> those of you who, who put some money in the jar, we appreciate it. But I'm just glad you enjoyed it because I was a little nervous with the, those black-eyed pea things. So that was kind of scary to cook. Um, I want to let you know, too, the nominations for women, women of Distinction, we're taking those until the end of January. So please stop at the front desk and get a nomination form if you could. And... We're going to end, if you would all just stand up, and uh, Cindy, if you would lead on your program, on page three is My Country Tis of Thee, and Dr. King mentioned that, and we'll sing that, and when we're done, we're, we're good to go. While Cindy's getting ready, here's one more quote. Martin Luther King said, people fail to get along because they fear each other. They fear each other because they don't know each other. They don't know each other because they have not communicated with each other. I hope you have met at least one new person today. Um, if you haven't, meet somebody before you walk out that door. You ready, Cindy? 
Okay.